This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The final matchups are now set in both Euro 2024 and Copa Americas. This match loom on Sunday. We got Spain taking on England and Argentina versus Colombia. We're going to break down both those matches today by talking to Austin Cass, getting his read on his favorite bets for both Copa America and Euro 2024 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I'm a managing editor for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Austin Cass. You can find his work at FanDuel Research, where he is a senior editor. You can find him on Twitter or X at Austin Cass. Austin, welcome back in. Exciting day coming up on Sunday. How you doing? Doing really well. How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing great. Excited for these matches. I was telling you on Slack that last night I was at a sports bar with a, an old friend and it apparently was a Columbia watch party. Didn't realize that was going to occur, but it was kind of fun energy. And so it's gotten me like in the mood now to actually lock in for these matches on Sunday. Awesome. Yeah, that that had to be very entertaining to be watching that match because things got really crazy there <laughs> i think there was a ball that went like off the crossbar at some point and like it was uh it was an emotional journey for everyone there involved and i you know i got invested at a certain point because it's a really fun atmosphere as i mentioned we're gonna break down both those games for today outline who austin thinks lifts the cup we'll break down his favorite bets are both at FanDuel sportsbook to get you ready for what should be a fun sunday on the pitch but first a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the covering the spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast next week we got the home run derby coming up on monday i'll break that down there we'll also have brandon gadula on to break down the open championship his favorite bets for that to get both those shows as they are posted make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast and if you like what you here leave us a five-star rating and review as well the dog days are here and the coolest place to get in on the mlb action is fanduel america's number one sports book because this summer fanduel is hooking up all customers they boost or a bonus daily that's right there is something for everyone every day all summer long you can score bigger winnings in any inning with profit boosts snag bonus bets for home runs every tuesday and even beat the heat with no sweat bets so head over to fanduel and start making the most out of your summer fanduel official sports betting partner of major league baseball must be 18 plus in dc and 21 plus in present in select states opt-in required wager requirements apply bonuses awarded as knowledge trouble bonus bets or profit boost tokens restrictions apply including bonus expiration see terms and conditions at fanduel.com slash sportsbook gambling problem call 1-800 gambler or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, and Wyoming. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. Or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1 877 770 STOP in Louisiana. Visit MD Gambling Help in Oregon, Maryland, or 100 Gambler.net in West Virginia. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1 877 8 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Austin, let's begin things here by talking about Euro 2024. It is Spain taking on England. Spain's a favorite at FanDuel Sportsbook. They sit at currently minus 136. England plus 116 to lift the cup. So who do you have lifting the cup, first of all, in this match? I think Spain get it done. Um, it's starting to feel like England might be a team of destiny and it's written in the stars or something. For them to have made it this far with some of the performances they put out there, it, it's really incredible. But for me, I just always come back to the numbers and, and it's been the other side all tournament. And they are coming off wins against Germany and France, who are two teams that are a lot better than anything England's had to face yet. Um, England, despite getting here, is still really struggling to create chances. They've amassed more than 1.0 expected goal in a match just twice through six outings, according to FBRF's XG model. One of those came last round when they had 1.2 expected goals against the Netherlands 
but that was aided by uh, England getting a penalty. And again, they've put up these underwhelming numbers despite a pretty soft run of opponents so far. In Spain, on the other hand, they have at least 1.5 XG in every match prior to the last time out against France when they had only 0.7 XG. But France is a pretty great team overall and one of the best defenses out there. I think France keeping Spain uh, under wraps is probably gives England a little bit of hope. But England's defense, which had been their calling card for much of the tournament and much of their previous tournament runs in recent years, really hasn't been all that great in the knockout rounds. They give up 2.2 XG to Slovakia and 1.5 to Switzerland. Spain are going to be by far the toughest challenge England have played this tournament. And on the flip side, England are probably the third best team Spain has played in these last three games. So Spain's defense will give up some chances due to their style of play and their style of attack. But I'm not sure England's sputtering attack can really do much to take advantage of it. And I think Spain are going to have a lot of the ball and create plenty against England's defense. Okay, so you got Spain lifting the cup. And as mentioned at FanDuel Sportsbook, they are the favorite at minus 136. Do you see value in that number, Austin? Or are you looking elsewhere for bets in this game? Um, I actually see more value in taking Spain to win in the 90 minutes at plus 145 on the money line. Um, I always like to play a little bit of game of like guessing what the lines are going to be. So in the few last minute or so of the England game, when it was like, holy cow, England just scored, they're going to win this. I was trying to guess, man, what's the line going to be against Spain? I thought Spain would be around plus 110. So I'm surprised that it's plus 145. To me, that feels way too long of odds for Spain. There's two projection models I really like, Opta and Massey ratings. Opta is pretty much right in line with Famous Sportsbook. Uh, they have Spain to win 40.7% of the time, which comes out to plus 147. Massey ratings is kind of more in line with what I was thinking. They give Spain a 47% chance to win, which is plus 113. Like I said earlier, I think Spain are going to dominate possession and create a lot of chances. It'll just come down to whether or not they can turn those chances into goals. I think they will, and I like them to win at plus 145. So I like two things there. I like that you're trying to guess the line in advance because it kind of tells you, okay, here's where I think the market should be. And then if it deviates from that, it tells you that's probably going to be a value. So I like that. But also using kind of a wisdom of the crowds thing where you're looking at those two models combined, try to dictate where things go. And obviously if one says it's pretty fair and the other one says it's a good value, that's going to lead towards Spain in the 90 minute market. They are plus 145 at FanDuel Sportsbook here. And to back up what you were saying, I think Spain was minus 185 after they had won before the Netherlands England match. And like, yeah, like it's probably because sportsbooks view England as being better than the Netherlands, but did England show enough in that match to generate that big of a swing from Spain being minus 185 to now being minus 136 here? I, I don't know. For, for me, no. There, there yeah. was probably a 30-minute stretch in the first half after another one scored where England looked as good as they have all tournament. Phil Foden was amazing. He was like the real Phil Foden from Man City showed up. And that was like, dang, England's fun. But it just seems like it takes going a goal down for them to be like, all right, right. let's ramp it up and like really be expansive and attack. They tied the game. And then the second half was pretty dreadful. And for both teams, especially Netherlands, but uh, I was surprised to see this line. And if Opta and Massey ratings both were in line with what Fandle Sports have had, I would probably assume I must be off. I was wrong. But the fact that one of them is also in line with me just makes me think, there's a little too much value being placed in what we thought of England before the tournament. And we have a pretty good sample of games now to see that that's, this isn't that England team, which sounds funny to say because they haven't lost and are playing in the final, but they got a very easy, easy draw in the knockout rounds, which you talked about last time I was on here. And I just don't think they're the team that the their numbers from before this tournament said that they were. Okay. okay, so we are liking uh, Spain to win in 90 minutes plus stoppage time. That is plus 145 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Any player props stand out to you in this one, Austin? So in the shots on target market, I like Laminia Mall at minus 120 to get a shot on target. He's been one of the, I was going to say breakout stars of the tournament, but that, that wouldn't be true. He starts for Barcelona as a 16-year-old, so he's already broken out, but... He's definitely cemented his status as one of the next uh, 
next superstars in world soccer. Uh, England have some decent defenders along the back line, but their weak spot this tournament has been left back. They've been playing the combination of Kieran Trippier and Luke Shaw there. Trippier wasn't great with Newcastle this past club season, especially the second half of the year. Luke Shaw is a very good player, but is coming off an injury and hasn't played more than one half in this tournament. And he, when he did, when he played, uh, he came on at halftime last game, didn't really look like the same guy, so he's not 100%. Well, that weak spot, that's where Lamal plays. He plays right wing for Spain. He's going to be taking advantage of whoever plays at left back and is probably licking his chops at this matchup. Um, I think he's going to find a lot of joy in this game where in Spain are going to have a lot of the ball, and he should uh, be able to create quite a few chances. And I think minus 120 is a pretty appealing number on him to get a shot on target which is something he's done in three straight matches. Okay, so Austin is on Spain, a plus 145 to win in 90 minutes plus stoppage time, and the breakout star, Lamine Yamal, to have a shot on target. Minus 120 in this one. Hopefully we can get Harry Kane a goal for you too. You talked about him 8-1 to win the Golden Boot. Could get one more there. Got to hold off um, Almo uh, in that one as well. So if we can get a Harry Kane goal and then Spain to win thanks to a Lamine Yamal shot on target, We'll be sitting pretty uh, for that one there. Let's talk now about Copa America. It is Argentina taking on uh, taking on Colombia. And interesting match here, Austin, because Argentina, pretty heavy favorite, minus 174, to lift the cup. When you look at this one, what are you seeing from a matchup perspective? Who do you got lifting the cup, Argentina versus Colombia? So to me, this is a much tougher one to call, even though Argentina is a bigger favorite than Spain was. But I think, yeah, we have the two sides that, based on how they've played this tournament, deserve to be in the final. And it's really tough to bet against Argentina with how good they've been in recent years. But uh, I think that's that's ultimately where I land. I think, I think there's value on the Colombia side. Um, but that's, that's no slight against Argentina. They've been pretty excellent in this tournament. They had one bad showing against Ecuador, and they managed to survive in penalties, which – that's a big part of these knockout tournaments. It's kind of like the NCAA tournament. Maybe you have one bad game. You got to just get over that and then can go on to the final four. But uh, outside of that match, they've created at least 2.1 expected goals in every other game. And they've allowed a combined total of 2.0 XG across those four matches. 1.3 of the 2.0 XG they gave up was in the first match of the tourney. So they really have been pretty lights out since then. But Colombia haven't given up more than 0.8 XG in any match this tournament. They've created at least 1.2 XG in every match aside from their tourna tournament opener. They drew versus Brazil in the group phase 1-1, but were actually pretty unlucky not to win. They won the XG battle 1.1 to 0.3. And then yesterday against Uruguay, they won 1-0, played the whole second half a man down. And despite that red card, they still only gave up 0.8 XG to a pretty good Uruguay team. So all in all, I think it's going to be a really good game. And I think if people haven't been following this tourney, but watch the final, they might be surprised at how good Columbia are. But overall, I'm taking Columbia to win in the 90 minutes at plus 290. I think I struggled to decide which, if I think there's value on Columbia, which I do, which is the best avenue to take advantage of that, either them to lift the trophy or the 290. Ultimately decided on the money line because Argentina are great in penalty shootouts and there's no, there's actually no extra time in Copa America. So if it's tied after 90 minutes, they'll go straight to penalties. Um, their goalie Emiliano Martinez has won several penalty shootouts here in the last few years for them. And I just don't really want to mess with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and take Columbia at plus 290. As I just said, they've been great this tournament in the Uruguay game. They showed that they can suffer and play without the ball and come out on the other side of it. And that, should come in handy against Argentina because Argentina is likely going to have a lot of the ball. So uh, Massey ratings give gives Colombia a 31% chance to win, with, which would be plus 233, and we can get Colombia at plus 290. So that's the side I fall on. I'm going to have to go back to the bar in my area to, to watch this game Sunday, then it sounds like, to uh, embrace my new friends um, and wa go to the Columbia watch party. Once again, I like the analysis there you gave where you want to avoid Argentina at their strength, and you can do so by betting Colombia in this specific market. That is in the 90-minute money line where Argentina plus 290 to win it in that span. Any player props stand out to you in this one? So I'm going to go back to the shot on target market. And I like 
messy to have two plus shots on target at minus 115. Um, admittedly, this is a little bit of a leap of faith because Messi hasn't been great this tournament, and it pains me to say that he's my favorite athlete of all time. But this is his first time stepping back up in competition since he came to the MLS, and I think that's a part of it. And he's also 37 years old and just a little bit like we saw with Ronaldo in the Euros. They're not the same guy anymore. Um, but I think he's got it in him to ramp it up one more time in this final, and he's made some comments that have hinted that this might be his last match with Argentina. The next World Cup's only two years away, so, and he's already playing in the U.S. Maybe, I don't know. But uh, there would really be no better way to go out than lifting, lifting this trophy for a second time in a row, sandwiched around, getting his elusive World Cup uh, in the middle of that. So it's, it's not just narratives, though. He takes free kicks and penalties, which are two roles that aid his chances of getting shots on target. And while I said... He's been a little out of form. He still has games of six shot attempts and four shot attempts over his over the four games he's played in this tournament. So he's still very much a vital part of Argentina's attack. And I think if they get down, they will be funneling him the ball and looking to him to create everything for them. And like I said, the penalties and free kicks are a huge part of this for me as well. All right, so that is in the two-plus shot market. Messi is minus 115 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Got a narrative in there, too. We get to bet on Messi, even while having that exposure to Colombia. I think this is the optimal way to view Copa America on Sunday, at least through my eyes. Yeah, and if if you go to uh, that Columbia watch party again, it'll it'll be electric. If, they're, if they have a chance yeah. to win late, it's going to be a lot of emotions for them. It'll be really fun. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. That is Austin Cass. Make sure you check him out on X at Austin Cass. Find his work at FanDuel Research, where he is a senior editor. A lot of good soccer stuff from Austin, as always. Over there, Austin, I appreciate the time, as always. Enjoy Sunday. We'll talk to you once again soon. Sounds good. Thank you, Jim. Thank you as well. As mentioned, we are back with you once again next week. We're going to talk the Home Run Derby, my favorite bets for that, on Monday. Then we'll talk through the Open Championship Tuesday. To get those shows as they are posted, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. If you got any questions from me, I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets for Copa America and the Euro 2024 final. We'll talk to you once again next week. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research Podcast. 